Um, welcome everybody to our artist interview with Maxwell Stepp. Welcome, Maxwell. Thank you for having me. Um, so yeah, um, I guess my first question for you is, um, how did you get started in art and um, what led you to um, pixel art? So how I got started in art, I mean, I think I started art the moment that I had a pencil in my hands. Mm -hmm. um, I started drawing from like a very young age. I would just draw anything that I saw, mainly cartoons that I saw on TV. That was like my main inspiration. I'll just try to recopy like every Pokemon, Digimon, and I'll just keep drawing and drawing. And then uh, how I got into pixel art, pixel art is fair. I'm fairly new to pixel art because well, like um, doing pixel art, I only started in like the summer of 2019. And I've always loved, yeah, I've always loved pixel art because of like, you know, like uh, all the old uh, video games and everything. But I never, I never like, um, it's, it, it, it was weird. I never like try to look deeper into it and, um, you know, like figure out like the whole pixel art and it only it only came to me in the summer of 2019 when i was just uh, looking at like inspiration inspiration like other artists and stuff and then i just saw somebody draw something and and he was really zoomed in and i saw the pixels of the line that he drew and i was like hmm this, this looks <laughs> cool and then i was like hmm and i and i really love doing portraits as well so i was like hmm maybe i can try to do something that probably isn't out there as much or haven't seen much of and then i just looked at like a quick a youtube video of how to do pixel art on photoshop and then the next day i drew my first uh, portrait just doing pixel art and from that i never stopped until now wow and because the way your style looks like i'm gonna scroll all the way to the bottom to see your first one i remember looking through that this was your first one yes wow so yeah it looks like you've been doing this for a while but you've only started about a year ago yeah exactly wow and um so you're entirely self-taught and you just like found a video on youtube that showed how to do pixel art exactly that was that, amazing <laughs> that's what happened uh i saw a video and then i was like okay it, it seems it seems fairly fairly straightforward the the way to go about it so then that's how i did it that's really cool and so um just backing up a little bit um are you using photoshop to create this pixel art or are you using another program at this point not strictly photoshop i haven't used anything other than photoshop up until now oh wow so yeah. um so, okay, so that would mean that you have not yet created something with Pixel Chain yet. Um, no, but I looked at it. I hadn't, I hadn't done it. I was, I'm, I'm planning to do something today after the, after now. Oh, that would be awesome. And definitely yeah. share it with us as soon as you do. Yes. Um, also, I learned a trick from a fellow um, a Pixel artist, DZ Rogs, when he interviewed here last time, he mentioned that if you go into the developer tools and look at the code, if you copy and paste the code, you can save your work. Like if you're not ready to mint the art and put it on blockchain yet, you can mm -hmm. save it so that you can use it for the future. So oh, that's cool. Just give you that bit of info um, Thank you. when you're ready. Um, yeah, I was curious what your impression of what your first impression of um, the Pixel Chain app is, um, being that you use Photoshop primarily. Oh, super cool. I feel like it's it's obviously um, more straightforward than Photoshop in doing the pixel pixel art. So it's going to be it's I feel like it's it's it simplifies things a lot compared to like if somebody try to do like pixel art on Photoshop to probably not everybody would know where to start. And uh, and I really love the whole uh, user interface, too. It's like it's, it's and the user experience, too, of it. There's nothing like really complicated and I can't wait to, to start uh, making stuff on it. Yay, that's awesome. Yeah, yeah. And, and we just launched um, Pixel Chain Max recently to have like more pixels and more 
colors in your palette. So yeah, I'm really excited to see what you do with it because um, from from what I know, like trying to do pixel art in Photoshop is very um, uh, tedious, right? <laughs> yes, it's tedious. I think what helps for me is that I, um, I use a, a Wacom tablet so it becomes easier where I'm like drawing instead of using my mouse. So that helps. Oh yeah, I would I would imagine. Um, and so I guess since we're talking about Photoshop and like, could you walk us through your process a little bit, um, like from conception to completion? Like, how are you um, working in Photoshop, and uh, where are you getting your inspiration from? So yeah, so I mainly get my inspiration from um, I look at like a bunch of photography. Um, I spend hours and hours on Pinterest. So there's like, that's like the main, main space. And then from that, I like, I pick, pick certain images that I really, I really love. And then from that, I, what I do, well, what I had started doing from the beginning is like, I usually just like sketch out like a black line of like the form, the face, the, the drawing and how I want it. And then after once I have that like layer down, it becomes easier to just like after put on the like skin and then the hair and I usually don't use much like if I'm doing the skin I I keep it to like like either three to four colors max so like to have like some highlight shadow and some mid-tones I'll probably use one or two mid-tones and then and then the same thing for like the hair I'll probably use like three colors or four colors max and uh, so on but that's 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 mainly my that's where i i really get my main uh, inspiration from uh, pinterest and i use reference all the like i use reference all the time to get to get it to look as it's like it's like an in-between realistic but not too realistic type i don't know how to explain it because I just went like with the flow from my first pixel art and then as I as I as I continued I I think I like refined my my drawings I feel like my older stuff is less refined because I was new to it and now as I as I continue to like um to make my newer stuff it's more I feel like it's more crisp and more cleaner than my older stuff so yeah wow I mean, I look at the older stuff and I'm like, that seems like someone has been doing it for a while. Yeah. And yeah, it's really cool how um, your style has is like deceptively um, realistic um, while being pixel art too. Um, and there's a lot of uh, soul um, in in the photographs there. Well, I don't want to say photographs, but in your subjects. Mm -hmm. um, do you have like a process for like how you pick your subjects or um like what pulls you to sub to a particular subject um yeah i i what i really um like is i like stuff that has like a lot of contrast and also like if the person is not just look like uh it's not just looking like it's not like a flat face you know like it's like three quarter angles i feel like work the best because then i'm able to like kind of create this kind of three-dimensional when it's just really flat if you, if you get what i mean like it seems it, because if the face is just like the person just looking at me and it's a flat face i feel like it loses that um a bit of um the 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 essence of the person for like for instance the one that you're on right now because she's like at a three-quarter angle and looking a bit up and everything it just it creates a sense of like um I don't know, like treatiness, but like it's flat. And I think that's, those are the type of stuff that I look for to be able to, to make, make it feel and look really more, a little more realistic and just add that, like, like you said, that soul into it. Yeah. Yeah. Even this one, it feels like, like it's moving to me too. Like she's just going to take off her glasses and I'm going to like my brain is like completing the video of yes. it or something, you know? Um, yeah. And is there, um, do you have like um, conceptual inspirations? Like, um, you know, uh, I see that you have some 
here, let me scroll. I was looking at like this one. I was curious, like what's the story behind this, like being consumed with red. And I see that you have um, like a version of that on Rarible as well. Yes. It's like very stunning stuff. So if you want to talk a little bit about more of that, of that. Yeah, I think this one I made uh, a while back. So I kind of maybe lost what was the whole inspiration uh, behind it. But I know that I did see, I did see some, like, I think I was looking like at a bunch of photos of like um, photography where there's like paint splashed on the models and and so on. And I think that the, what I really loved about it is that it looked, it, it kind of looked like, um, how do you say, um, it's, like, it looks like, it's what what it made me thought of like the whole paint all over the body and type and only like the face reveal is kind of like like um something taken over type of thing and you're trying to stop it but you can't and um yeah i think that's 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 from what i remember that was like the main thought i don't remember exactly from back then like what exactly went through my mind in detail but that's uh that's mainly it yeah, I definitely get that sense of like she's being consumed by like an emotion or maybe her own like skinless body or something. <laughs> but, like, um, but it looks really beautiful, even though it's a little bit morbid. Um, mm -hmm. Yeah, it's super cool. Um, so I see like you've got a couple of works on Rarible. Um, do you want to talk a little bit about? Um, how how you were introduced to the world of crypto art and nfts yeah so it really just started i think like the ending of uh last year like december i think there's another pixel artist that i follow um i think he had an interview as well on here uh, i think his name is khaled khaled pixel on uh, twitter oh, yeah. mm -hmm. yes so i i think i saw i saw him post um a piece that he 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 said that he had on super rare and then and then that intrigued me and then i saw that he sold it and then i was like oh what's this and then then i went down the rabbit hole of figuring out what crypto art was and then um and then not only that like i think the day after i had like um posted a I, like i tweeted a, one of my uh, one of my pixel art and then somebody commented on it and said hey have you ever tried putting your art on rarible and i was like no i never did I'll check it out. And then that got me into knowing what Rarible was. And then I, again, I was deep in the, the rabbit hole. And then I said, you know what? I think I'll push, like, I'll, I'll put, start putting my art on, um, on, uh, like, yeah, for, for bidding and stuff on, uh, for crypto art starting like, uh, 2021. And so that's, that's how it all started. But really, it really started what piqued my interest and how I, like, got to know about it was seeing Khaled um uh sell something on super rare and then that and then i did my 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 due diligence and dipped right inside of it <laughs> that's awesome yeah uh, yeah i love this space it feels like um there's so much uh mutual inspiration and you're finding out about all this new stuff and um like artists are able to support each other through like introducing them to these platforms and what's cool is like nothing is being taken away from Khaled by telling you like, Hey, you could sell your stuff here too. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Um, so I was, I was curious, um, do you have work on any other, um, platforms like Rarible or, um, on maybe OpenSea? For now, I only, I only, I only, um, minted stuff on Rarible um as of as of today yeah so that that's that's where you'd find my stuff okay cool I'm gonna yeah. share the links again for for newcomers because i see the room is started slowly filling up um so is there anything has there anything that stopped you from uh expanding to other platforms outside of rarible no there's nothing i actually did like um apply to for like super rare and uh, i believe a art and um foundation 
I think mm. yeah I sent my profile so I mean I haven't gotten an answer back so I'll, I'll just wait for that but so far I only have my stuff on Rarible I'm just waiting to have a, a to be accepted I guess from from those other platforms and then see where my art takes me nice yeah. I heard uh, you mentioned async so are you planning to do some kind of like um pixel art that can be like generative or um interactive yeah i'm uh, i'm like open to like do really like now it's just to take my art to the next level so yes i'm definitely looking into like taking my art to the next level and explore and just experiment i think i think that's that's the f the fun of it you know like i've done this for like over a year <clears throat> when i just started the pixel art but like i only did like portraits and so on no animation or anything so that's what I, I plan to do like for this year really take it to the next level and just see where my mind can go and where my art can go so definitely look looking to do some more of that well, I can't wait to see I, I mean I'm, I'm loving your um, portraits and the figures that you're doing um, and you're saying that you want to expand around that um, I'm curious what what um, mediums were you using before you found um, pixel art and where do you see yourself? Um, or how do you see your pixel art evolving based on what you've done in the past or maybe not based on what you've done in the past? If you're looking forward, then. Yeah. <laughs> but I'm, uh, yeah, so I mean, before I did pixel art, I did a lot of just like uh, Photoshop um, painting, just like digital painting. Um, and then I did a lot of like um, more like uh, a lot of just pencil drawing, like because I, 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 I drew ever since I was a kid and I, I did like a, I have a degree in illustration and design as well. So like I did just a lot of drawing, but I didn't really have a style. So I was trying to like just draw and try to figure out my style and so on. And then that's when the, the pixel art hit i was like yeah this is this is it it just felt right and every time i would finish a piece i would just be like like i'd like have a smile from air to air because like mm -hmm. i really enjoyed looking at what i was able to get from like you know like something that looked realistic and then the the result of my pixel art afterwards really it just had like a, a nice feeling to it after i was able to accomplish it because i feel like it's like some some of them become like a challenge because you're not sure if you're going to be able to capture the essence really well or it's going to come out as well and then when it's complete i think like, you just feel that like relief of success yes this is it it looks good and uh and so on and so like for now for like in the future where my art i feel like it needs to go or where i'm trying to bring it is to like really try to bring it even more to to life you know like have more of that essence and soul and so i that's why i want to take it to like i think more like animate like animate some of them and stuff like and just see where it can bring me like just experiment i know i'm working on a couple of stuff that i've started to like animate and everything but i've never i've done a little bit of animation when i was like still studying in school so it's kind of like i'm so rusty at it so i just want to get get those skills uh, hone down before I release anything but uh, yeah I think there's there's really where my my artwork is gonna bring me I'm gonna you're gonna probably see more um, animated stuff with uh, my figures oh that's exciting and animated pixel art I know is not the easiest task um, yes yes it's yeah. not but I feel like the results are so worth it like you said you know you when you found when you realized that pixel art was your thing you know you were smiling ear to ear because it just felt good yeah it just felt right it. yeah yeah that's cool after you know after a lot of years of trying different mediums and then you know like traditional mediums and then in the end it's like oh pixel art like that's what feels good <laughs> yeah yeah. Then, yeah it takes a while for people to find that um it's really yeah cool it does it does was. yeah, yeah. Um, and do you have do you actually work in other mediums like do you have any work that you could share with us that um is like in the previous mediums that you've used oh uh, yeah let me should i just share it in like the live stream chat do you think um, 
Yeah, yeah, you could just share a link there and I can put it up on my screen if, if that's cool. Yeah, I don't have a link. I think I just have like a, a photo because... Oh, yeah. Yeah, you like I can just... Okay, let's see if I can find it real quick. Nice. But yeah, so like, yeah, I've done no... Uh, oh, yeah. Is it here? Okay, hold on. Just give me a second. Sure thing. I'm just oh, showing is... your art in the meantime. Yeah, thank you. <laughs> yeah, these are gorgeous. Um, if, in case anybody missed it, the Bernie Sanders, everybody had to do their twist on it. I love this one. <laughs> <laughs> thank you. It's so funny. Okay, so I have two things that I can, like some digital painting that I've done in the past. This was like, probably um like at, it was in 2018 so like three years ago and it's just done on photoshop so i just shared it in the I see the live stream it. chat i'm gonna put it in a and these are based off of like f these are based off of photos that uh that were on um pinterest yeah. Wow, that's really beautiful. Thank you. Yeah. Um, and I'm curious, like, I feel like portraits are like some of the hardest um, things to do. Like as an artist, sometimes I find that like I might avoid drawing a face because I'm, like, <laughs> ah, I'm not going to get it right. Like what made you decide to go for um, portraits? Yeah, it's weird. I really don't know um, what drew me to like do portraits but I think looking back I realized that um I've always really liked to draw um people like even when I was in school I would just like like most of my like artwork projects always involved like trying somebody's face and so on instead of their their whole body and I think maybe because like um I like younger when I was drawing I probably had maybe more difficulties like uh drawing like the whole body and like with proportions and stuff so I guess maybe my comfort zone was to go to the face and then that slowly grew into me just like drawing mainly um portraits and everything so I think I think that's that's probably why it happened and now it's just like a thing although I did hone my skills to draw <laughs> draw like full bodies and everything and uh practiced a lot to, to get proportions right and, and and stuff but i think still my 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 true love is drawing people's face i just feel like compared to drawing like the whole body when you have like a close-up of the person's face it just feel you have that fam familiar ad familiar rat uh, i can't say the word properly <laughs> but you know <laughs> what i mean yeah yes yeah. exactly yeah. Yeah, yeah, there's some there's like a connection to be made when you see somebody's face. Sorry for the background noise. No, no problem. <laughs> um, yeah, I love this piece with um the hand that looks like it's like a tree trunk, um or like wiping away a tear. Um, yeah. It's do you want to talk about more like the inspiration behind that one? Cuz yes. I have an idea of my own, but I'm curious. So cuz again, this is this is a while back I did this, so probably not as accurate but i know that in that in that time period when i was doing it um i really had like um i really liked mixing like uh people with like uh, stuff of nature so like it would be like trees and i really i was always drawn to trees especially because it, it has this whole i think i had this whole thing with trees that i felt that's very metaphorical with like the roots and then like the top of a tree is called the crown and and so on so i think that was like the whole inspiration behind this and also like mm. the fact that like nature itself you know it's being harmed and it's like it's as if he's wiping a tear away from his face because it's like it's hurt, it's hurt at like uh how we treat basically the environment and yeah. and so on but like the environment always gives and we take but we never try to give back you know what i mean type of 
type of thing. So I think that was inspiration behind this. It's it's not even completely complete to be honest because I think I still wanted to like add like the whole wood texture to the face, and I just probably like gave up at some point. <laughs> that's probably what happened. But uh, yeah, that's that's the story behind it, I believe. Wow, and. Yeah, that brings me to my next question. Um, you know, as you're saying, like, oh, I probably, like, this isn't really finished to me, and I, I probably gave up on the wood texture. Like, what's the most challenging aspect of of creating um, art for you, and how do you work through it? Um, I think the most challenging thing of creating art is is that you're always like. I mean, like for me, it's like I'm competing with myself. So it's like, I really want to just, I always want to bring it to the next level, you know? And I think sometimes when you're creating some pieces, you may not feel satisfied because you feel like you didn't bring it to the next level. You're happy with the piece, but you feel like, oh, like I need something more. You know what I mean? I think that's that's probably the most that I struggle with is that you, it's like you want to always do something more, more better, more greater and stuff. But sometimes you have to remind yourself that, you know, like it's it's um, it's a work in progress and you just got to enjoy the progress and and not only um, just enjoy the. Um... Hold on, I'm not sure whose mic is on. Yeah. Oh. OK, OK, sorry about that, folks. <laughs> So yeah, so like you just wanna you just wanna enjoy the progress and not just always wait for the just uh, you know like the end results. So I think, but that's what I st I think I struggle the most is that I always wanna give uh, something next and really wanna push my art to the next level. And sometimes I feel like maybe I'm not it's it's not there yet. But I think that's that's I think every artist struggles with that and that I think that's 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 how it is from the beginning that you decide to create something. The next time you create, you always want it to be better than what you created before. So I think that's like an ongoing thing with anything in general in life. You know, you want to be better, a better person as well, too. So it's I think it's applied to everything. But yeah. Yeah, yeah, for sure. I think that's probably one of the hardest things about being an artist and trying to make new things. And you want to keep your skills up and you want to keep creating but sometimes when you're spending too much time comparing yourself to what you think is the next level for yourself or if you think if you compare yourself it worse if you compare yourself to other people yeah like it just like stops you from creating but it's really inspiring to look at other artists especially when you're feeling stuck yes it is yeah. it is very yeah uh, yeah um so actually getting back to like a conversation about nfts and um so you mentioned that you just started in 2021 right yeah uh, january on yeah. Rarible. wow yes. so i would imagine that you've noticed that it can be quite expensive to mint a piece of art <laughs> yes um, so how do you see the crypto art landscape changing in a way that would eventually like make things a more level playing field, both for artists and collectors? Like, do you have any ideas of your own about how we could work together and like make this easier financially? <laughs> <laughs> I, I, that's a good question. I think I think I'll have to spend more time in the space to be able to grasp maybe like a, a better solution i mean just quickly like right now i can maybe say i don't know like maybe there's like a i don't know it's it's really hard to it's really hard to say i i wouldn't have a a quick like solution that i thought of to be able to give uh at this point but hopefully down the line i'll be able to, to answer that question and and see you know and suggest something yeah, yeah. I feel like, you know, the, the feedback I've gotten when I asked that question is that it's really developers that are going to help um, sort of, you know, create new platforms and new ways of, uh, I guess, maybe avoiding the gas trans uh, fees or yeah. maybe sharing the fees in some way. Um, 
I don't know, but it seems like now the world, the space is getting bigger and there's more artists joining it. So, you know, at some point it's going to have to change because it's, it's financially prohibitive for a lot of artists. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Um, and I would love to see more from you. And of course, you know, we're selfishly excited to see what you do on um, Pixel Chain because yes. um, we think it's a really cool app. And um, I think, you know, for me personally, like I never made pixel art before um, Pixel Chain came along or I never tried to because I tried doing it in Photoshop and I was like, this is <laughs> so annoying. <laughs> <laughs> so like, God bless all of you who work in Photoshop and like, have been making pixel art for years like this because <laughs> I I could never do it. Um, but yeah, it's um, something new and there's all kinds of new um, art platforms coming up in the crypto space that, um, you know, we can hardly keep up. But uh, yeah, yeah, this one's really fun. I think it's really accessible. Um, so this might be a difficult question or maybe not. Um, what is the most helpful or life-changing piece of advice that you've received as a creator that you would want others to know? Oof, yeah, that's a hard question. Um, <laughs> advice, I don't, I think, I, I haven't gotten much advice, to be honest, as, as an artist. But I remember, I still remember, like, um, hmm. Yeah, like, I, I, I mean, I remember one teacher had told me, like, you know, just, I think if you're, if you're, if you're an artist and you're a creator and that's what you love to do, just keep on creating. I think that's, that's, I think that's like the best advice that you can give somebody because especially if you're a creator and you, your desire is to create, the moment that you stop creating, you're going to probably feel unsatisfied with whatever you do in life because you're not getting to create, you know, and and that's create like art or create anything because I feel like anything in life is art, you know, everything is design, everything is, you know, like from the table that you're, that you're sitting on or the chair that you're sitting on, it's art because yes, it has a functionality, but it's still, it's still, it was still created. It still started in the mind of somebody and then became something and that something is useful but it's still it's useful art you know what i mean so i feel like it, the best advice to anybody is just to keep on creating no matter what the circumstances is are and um yeah just keep creating i think that's the best advice that uh, i got and that i can give and spread to others never stop creating yeah, it's, it's one of those pieces of advice that's, it's really simple, but it's like much easier said than done, I yeah. think, for some people. Um, yeah, it's like interesting how like sometimes there's artists that they're like compelled to create all the time, all day long. And then some, some of us are like so stuck in our own heads that we don't make anything for a very long period. Of yeah, time. that's true. And it's, it's such a weird loop to get into as an artist, too, because you know that if you just make something, if you just start putting pencil to paper or start, if, you, if, you're, if you're a musician, you just start playing the piano, you start playing the guitar, just do something, like, you'll feel good. Like, Yeah, just, exactly. It's like, you got to just stop thinking about other people um, and stop thinking about where you've been you know, like comparing yourself to like, okay, I got to like take this to the next level. I need to get better. Um, just finding the joy in actually creating. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. With creating and like just playing with the medium. Um, and you know, it's different for everybody. Like you found joy in making pixel art in Photoshop. And I was like, this is way too tedious for me. <laughs> I cannot do it. But um yeah, I think also, yeah, artists out there keep playing with different stuff too. Now I'm giving advice, but <laughs> definitely just keep playing and keep creating. That is the best advice I would say. Yeah, um, yeah so do you have any, oh, we have a question from the audience. Oh. Uh, Ektarani, Ektarani, sorry if I 
butchered that. Ekterani asks, what was your profession goal during study? Like, I guess when you were going to school, what were you um, hoping to do when you finished school? Oh, uh, what I was hoping to do when I finished school, um, I just wanted, I, what I was hoping to do when I finished school was be a graphic designer. Um, because where I live, those were the like, the bigger like opportunities that were that were available instead of like more illustrative jobs like with like con- concept art or, or so on so that was yeah that was my profession goal um to be a graphic designer but i only wanted to be a graphic designer honestly to just have like the skills that then after because i wanted to create my own like uh, clothing line and that was like my goal from ever since i was a teenager i had like a bunch of t-shirt designs that i did and then i and and then i was like okay i'm gonna go to school learn photoshop illustrator whatever i need get a job to get even more experience within the the like field of like clothing and then start my own uh, clothing line which i did end up doing um so yeah what i was like wait this is like a whole secret um (laughs) where can we see this clothing line well i stopped it I, I stopped I stopped creating because I did it with uh, I had a partner with a friend and then we did it for like a few years and then after it it kind of stopped because we were like not on the same page about a, a bunch of stuff and then we just like decided to like scrap it the whole thing so that you won't be able to find anything I still have like hoodies and t-shirts like in my closet and like friends and families and people that purchased that have purchased in the past as well. But yeah, I don't think you'd be able to find anything of it now. It's it's that's it's the secret that that uh, that's not right, really there on the internet as much. So yeah. Oh, do you see yourself um, going into fashion again at some point? Uh, yeah, probably more towards the future because I did do like like at some of my jobs that I've done in the past. Um, I worked for like a, a company that just did like clothing for like walmart and like uh, like other um, name brand i've done like stuff for like fashion nova men's when they just came out with their men's line and stuff mm. but uh the the whole scene of like of that is it's kind of it, it it felt a lot of like um like kind of like mcdonald's for like clothing you know so i got a little like turned off a bit from it and then i was like you know what i'll probably come back for like just more exclusive things that that I care more about than just making a whole clothing line and uh, for say because I feel like the whole clothing industry as well it just it's kind of become like a more copy paste type of thing it's like well copy paste at a more affordable price and because whatever is trending everybody has to be on the same um same boat you know what i mean in order to like make sales and so on so i got to see really what the clothing industry is for real and i was like uh i think i'd rather just make clothes for fun of it and like clothes that people would want to buy from me as an artist as to like making a whole clothing line so but yeah that i do have i I do have some plans for clothing in the future oh yeah because um yeah i'm curious what you would do and if i don't know if you've heard of digital acts digital X, but they are, um, they, you can make NFTs out of your, um, fashion creations. Oh, too. So that's cool. it's like, yeah, I mean, basically NF, anything, I almost said NFT, anything, <laughs> <laughs> anything can be, um, made into an NFT. It's really exciting for creators, I think. Yeah, that's um, very cool. Yeah. Um, and you mentioned that, uh, you were trying to get experience in graphic design. Um, is that what you're doing now? Um, yeah. Well, I did start off. Um, I'm not doing that any. Like right now, I'm a. Pro, I'm actually a product designer, so I do like UX and UI, oh, cool. like and during the day, and then pixel art uh, during the day and at night because I'm always <laughs> like. <laughs> But like, um, yeah, so like uh, right now I work as a product product designer. So I do UX UI for, um, for uh, this app called Paper Education. It's like a, it's a, it's like a tutoring service for, for, for students, but like 24 seven tutoring service. Um, yeah, so that's, that's what I do right now. That's cool. And yeah, I would imagine you have to, uh... You have to keep um, 
it's you you can't just moonlight as a pixel artist you you have to like squeeze it in during yeah the exactly and there's too much to do <laughs> yeah exactly um so um we're already at like 40 minutes um so i wanted to ask do you have any like upcoming projects that you want to tell us about or um i know that you before our call i had asked if you had any new work um you had mentioned that this is a um part of a commission right yeah these are like commissioned work that i've done in the past um i i do I don't have, I do have something that I'm, I'm, I'm like, uh, trying, like that's that I'm going to release in the coming days. That's I'm trying to do like this. It's, I won't reveal what it is, but it's, it's, I, I hopefully will come out the way I'm, I'm picturing it to come out. And it's, I think it's going to be a little different from what I've uh, done in the past. So, um, but that's what I'm working on right now at this moment. So hopefully I'll have that by like the end of the week or early next week or on the weekend. I don't know. But uh, yeah, I have something cool and exciting that I'm working on. <laughs> All right. I was just going to say, keep your secrets. <laughs> <laughs> no, you got to have a little element of surprise too. Um, oh yeah, I loved this one, this glitch piece. Um, yeah, thanks. It, it, is that like the a Venus de Mil, the face of that statue or something? No, actually, I I wouldn't. Um, I, it's not actually. It was actually a collab that I did with uh, another artist, the friend that I have, and uh, she actually we like collabed on this piece together. So like I did the whole like pixel art and, and got it to look like that, but she did like the initial um, drawing of it, and then from that I took her initial drawing and then made it into a pixel pixelated piece that looks like this so wow. yeah yeah i feel like glitch pixel art is like an extra level of complication yes <laughs> and this piece here too is cool this was this for a um like a band this is, or? yeah this was actually for um a, a, a rapper with his like producer friend that they're, they're coming out with an album so that was yeah that was like a com that was actually a, also a commissioned work too that i did uh, did for them for their album cover super cool and wait did i forget to them yeah that was all of them so yeah. for now everything you have coming out is a secret um yes. but people can follow you on twitter and instagram to keep up with that right yes exactly Sweet. um I guess, is there anything else that you would uh, like our community to know if there wasn't, if there's anything that we didn't cover um, that you could promote? Um, yeah, we, we'd love to keep up with our artists and support them um, however we can, so. Yeah, no, I don't think there's anything that comes to mind that uh, you guys didn't cover that I would like to share. Um, yeah, I, I think just follow me on my socials and you know, and uh, that's it. Sup support a brother. And uh, yeah. yeah. Yeah, well, um, of course, uh, we we love to, um, you know, support our um, pixel artists and our pixel chain artists. So um, you can always come back here um, if you have any questions about using pixel chain. We just want to show work in progress um, or show finished pieces. Finished pieces. We have a really lively and supportive community here. Um, so feel free to come back. And um, we also have interviews every week. So, um, yeah, so there's always inspiration and um, action here in the Pixel Chain and Crypto Motors uh, server. So, um, and just thank you for uh, accepting our invitation and for your presence and time. Thank you for having me and, and giving me this opportunity to talk with you guys. Really enjoyed it. Yeah, thank you so much. And um, I just tipped you in well, and I will talk to you about that later. I'll send All right. you a message. And um, yeah, thank you so much for your time again. Um, it was really a pleasure talking with you. And thanks everybody for your presence and have a great day. All right. Thank you. You bye. too. Bye. Okay, bye.